So this is a review of the latest beta release um, 00160. Um, this is a culmination of a number of changes that have taken place at the front end, uh, some tidying up of the UX and some new features. So I'll we'll start with the UX. We now have a top bar which has a number of features which we'll talk through and the bottom bar which has information and also now we have control of the radios and feedback on where the radios are tuned in the bottom bar. We've also tidied up the menu here. This is no longer multi-line but single line and that's important because what that's allowing us to do is effectively um, give us some HTML rendering which makes things look a lot cleaner as you can see here. So running across the top menu we have the sync button here recommended every time you make contact with a new controller or just before. The map icon which you're familiar with. What's new in maps? Not a lot. Basically these now have tool tips on. You can see not the most responsive in the Microsoft uh, simulator. You'll see that their browser is not doing a great job. But um, it should give you some idea of what these do. The next point is messaging. Currently we don't have outbound messaging, but there are a number of features in here that still work. You have a number of preset buttons. One of the important ones here, and if we type in here, K, J, F, K, and then press on the weather, and then send that we will get a weather report for John F. Kennedy and you need the Metar key in your config.ini instructions do that on the uh, github page and there is the meta and you'll notice now that we have a human decode um, human readable decode in here plus the other information and you'll notice the HTML now makes it look a lot cleaner the other important one over here and this is important because we're sitting at South End so there isn't actually a station for South End at the moment is that if you click on the weather report it will find your nearest field and give you that weather so you can use the first option if you're flying somewhere that doesn't have ATIS and the second option if you're departing somewhere where you don't have ATIS it will give you your nearest weather and that is updated real time so if you're flying and you want to find out the weather on the ground near you you can do that the next feature is the filter and this brings up a small bar here and you can filter on a number of fields so the first one is and the default is the airport ICAO so if we want to see if there's any German controllers ED. and you can see we can go on and put Raymond in there and that would filter down if you clear the filter it also removes it from the button the next one is airport name so if you wanted one of the London, L-O-N, you see you've got Gatwick, Luton and others in there as well. Again, we'll clear that down. The top is based on the controller call sign. So controller call sign Lima, India, and you'll see that we've got Milan. And the last one is controller name. So if we wanted to put in here uh, Bremen, B are and you can see the Bremen radar comes up and there are actually two controllers on so we'll clear that down worth bearing in mind that obviously the filter while the filters are in you may miss controllers coming online so it's always worth clearing down and refreshing distance sets your distance from from your um, now this is the distance from the aircraft put in the tables so important to recognize that obviously again if you've got you're flying in a VFR instance you might want it local say 100 miles and if you want to go IFR and you're flying to a destination short haul you might put a thousand the next option is some config settings so you can restart the server if you've had a crash to desktop it's probably worth giving the re server a restart um, you'll know that the server has restarted because you will actually get the config message come back up in terms of the configuration if you if you're in VR you'll get a confirmation of restart through the uh, UX it will send me new messages although it is probably worth refreshing the UI um, at the point when you restart the server as well just to make sure you've got all the latest settings so you've got your distance configuration 
you've also got a, a, a experimental large font don't recommend using it at the moment but it's there for people to if they have eyesight problems in VR the uh, these are not necessarily responsive in fact they are responsive in Chrome they're sadly not responsive in the browser there's an about button which brings up a frame and tells you all about the links and things that you can uh, contribute on and those are clickable through an open and external window that's experimental at the moment as well moving through the new features there's very few new features we've tidied up as say the pop-ups now you'll notice they're much more readable um, the rest of this is standard features one of the things that you can do although not working at the moment will be to click on a controller and it'll set up a message to go there that is currently non-functional and if I do try and send a message um, you will notice it will tell you that that has not been implemented it's a bit more error handling going on as well certainly um, the radios sometimes fall out of sync with Zoom Connect which need a server restart and you'll get a message if that's the case so what we've got um, along the bottom here that's your um, refresh period that's set in the config.ini uh, it's defaulting out to 10 minutes here and that's your range so you notice that if we put our distance uh, to 100 that shows up in there it comes up there you also have the ability to set a feed filter so if you've got airport ICAO set and you set that to E G S S you will actually get airport ICAO set in the ground so you know that the filter has been applied the next piece is the um, radio set so radios now show you which frequencies are tuned now one of the things you've got to consider and one of the issues here is we have to do a reverse lookup because you might tune the radios outside of VSR there's about a 10 second lag to get an update so if I was to um, tune my com to 129.175 um, on my com 2 standby there it is 129.175 one of the things to bear in mind is this lookup sometimes plays back the wrong controller because what it's doing is looking to see who's online and looking up that frequency. So if we were to put now SX ground or Gatwick, Gatwick ground into COM2 standby, which is where we've just been there, see it comes up on there and it says change standby and you'll see now it says the ground. Um, 1218 is both uh, ground at Stansted and also at Schiphol and you can see that it's actually shown that up as um, as being the case so if we set our distance to a thousand miles and put our filter to E let's clear that now put our filter to E H A you'll see the ground is there is also 1218 that's one of the small vagaries that happens and that's because as I say you can change the radio outside another important factor here is that you can change the com uh, active and standby through these so that's com1 and you'll see okay, that's changed one, three, taxi, wait on the Delta, Bravo, 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 one, S6 zero, approach, zero. flick across we're back at Unicom here we've got um, those two frequencies on COM2 so if we were to put Essex let's clear ourselves down here clear that filter put Stansted as COM2 standby and then flick that information might have time 1220 runway in U04 when 050 at 13 visibility 9999999 Thank you.